Hey, I'm back. I haven't done a snapshots from the Bible in a long time. I apologize. It's one of those summer things. We've had a lot going on, but I want to get back into that habit because I miss talking with you about God's Word. And so I'm Pastor Justin, back with another snapshots from the Bible. And today we are over with the Olympics. The Olympics were the last couple weeks and they're finished. They're done. And it was pretty cool. There were some great stories that came out of that. Uh, as I was watching this, I don't think this happened at this Olympic. It was a, another race at one time. But I was reminded of a video of this track runner who was uh, sprinting all out, got to the end, uh, you know, was clearly leaps and bounds in front of everybody else. And as he got close to the finish line, he slowed down to start waving and smiling and, and cheering and enjoying his victory before he had crossed the finish line. And what he didn't see was that there was another runner coming up hard behind him. And by the time he saw that runner and started trying to pick up speed, it was too late. And he lost first place and ended up in second. And I was thinking of that, you know, during the Olympics. And also, as I was reading some of my devotions this week, from First Chronicles, back in the Old Testament, uh, around chapter 14, 15, somewhere around there. And it talks about a king of southern Judah named Asa. And King Asa was actually a really good king. Now Judah, the southern kingdom of Judah, sometimes had good uh, believer kings, and sometimes they had evil kings. And the Bible would always differentiate between them. Always remember the northern kingdom of Israel never had a good king. They always had bad kings. So Asa was one of the good kings. He was a man after God's own heart. He comes in uh, as a king, starts doing all these incredible religious reforms, get, gets rid of all the idols, brings the country back to worshiping God. God is pleased at this, blesses Asa, says, I'm going to give you peace, I'm going to give you prosperity. And for decades, that's what they enjoy, peace and prosperity. He's running the race. He's doing really well. But toward the end of his life, Asa slows down and he starts stumbling and he makes two key errors. First of all, when there's a threat that arises of another country, he makes a deal, a pact with a pagan nation for mutual protection instead of going to the Lord. He shows more trust in his own abilities and his alliances than going to the Lord. God is very displeased at this. He's like, you trusted me your whole life and now when it really matters, you won't. Uh, th therefore, for the rest of your days, there's going to be conflict. There's going to be war in your country where there's only been peace your entire life. And then a little while later, Asa gets a really nasty foot infection, the Bible tells us. And instead of praying to God, taking it to God, once again, he just relies on his own doctors, on his own uh, strength, and ends up dying. Now, whether he died in faith or not, that's not my call to make. I certainly hope so. I always hope so. But it's a good example of how we can get to the end of our race and become complacent. We can get to the end of our lives or in the, the elder years of our lives, even toward the middle years of our lives, and figure, I've done pretty good before. I've really pleased God. I've done a lot of great things. Um, maybe I can start slowing down. Maybe I don't have to serve him as much. Maybe I don't have to obey as much. Maybe I can start indulging in some of these sins I've put off for most of my life. And we don't finish the race strong. That was Paul's biggest concern, that he wanted to finish the race of his life well and strong. He wrote this in 2 Timothy 4, 7. He said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. And he writes that pretty much toward the end of his life when he was about to be executed. I have finished the race. I've kept the faith. Every step Paul made ever since the road to Damascus was strong and sure, and he kept his eyes on the Lord. And that's our encouragement today. We don't want to... I'm sorry, I'm getting a little bit of a weird sun glare. It's early in the morning. Uh, <laughs> we don't want to finish our race in this world on a whimper, on a lackluster note. We want to go out in top form. Now, yes, our bodies may not physically be there, but our spirituality should be stronger than ever. If we continue to grow in Christ, our elder years should be some of the most amazing years that we can give advice, guidance, be an amazing example, use our gifts and our talents and our wisdom 
uh, to minister as best we can. I think there's, we should never uh, dismiss people because of their age. We should actually look up to them. So let's finish strong, no matter where you are in your life. Deter make your, your determination to be more like Paul, less like Asa. Don't slow down. Keep going strong until you cross that finish line. And you'll know you've crossed it when you hear these words. Well done, my good and faithful servant. All right, go in peace. We'll see you next week. Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, please click the link in the upper right hand corner to view our message, the most important video you will ever watch. Join us for worship Sunday mornings at 10.30 a.m., either in person at 2595 Elmwood Avenue in Kenmore, New York, or on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash KNOXEPC. Find past sermons on our website noxepc.com forward slash sermons. Stay up to date with Knox Church. To receive our monthly newsletter, email office at noxepc.com. If you need prayer, send an email to pastor at noxepc.com. You can request text alerts by texting 734-968-1847. Knox Sunday School happens every Sunday at 9 a.m. for kids grades kindergarten through 8th, and for adults of all ages. Email office at noxepc.com for more information. Knox Evangelical Presbyterian Church. Our motto is truthful teaching, and graceful living. We are committed to growing in the knowledge of Jesus, serving Him by serving others, and loving the body of Christ. To donate to Knox Church via PayPal, visit knoxepc.com and click on giving at the top of the page, or scan the QR code above with your smartphone or tablet. Special thanks to our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the members of Knox Church. Without them, this outreach wouldn't be possible.